So I know you're currently right now thinking about starting a car rental business, but you just see different avenues, right? You see different business models and you're wondering which one is for you. So with inside this video, I'm gonna be breaking down all the ways that you can start within a car rental space or just rentals in period. And then with each one, you'll be able to see, okay, that's the one I wanna be able to go for, just so you can be a little bit more clear-minded when it comes to picking out what business model works for you. So first thing first, I'm gonna dive into the straight bare minimum. Um, I'm gonna go into sedans. So sedans will be first. So, and when I say sedan, um, I'm talking about usually your four-door sedans, right? You also can have coupes as well. So, I'm going to just go coupe sedan, and uh, we can go four-door. So, these vehicles like this, you're looking at your Toyotas, you're looking at your Honda Civics, um, Ford Fusions, um, Toyota Camrys, uh, Fiat, um, a Nissan Altima, like any vehicle that has four doors, Kia K5, like those are your sedan vehicles. Now with these vehicles, these are my favorite. Um, and the reason why is people need these cars every single day. And a huge reason you see this is uh, because they're very good on gas, right? And uh, you can put multiple people within a car and it doesn't cost that much to get this vehicle. So that's why it's a, a favorite of mine. And then too as well, when it just comes to the rental space, people keep these vehicles for a longer period of time. So I don't have to be as hands-on when we talk about like a sports car and uh, you know, getting into high-end luxuries too as well a little bit later in the video. But those cars are my favorite. You look at Enterprise, you look at Hertz, you look at Avis. All these companies built up their business by starting with sedans. They're just easy to maintain, easy to acquire, and uh, the renter just loves that experience. So uh, that's sedan based, okay? So you're dealing with a pretty, uh, a decent amount of customer most of the time. Either people are using it for vacations, their car went down, um, or they just may need a vehicle um, to drive long, long term for themselves. So that was, those are usually like sedans. Okay, so after sedans, I'm gonna move into, let's move into sports cars. So sport cars. And these, obviously they won't be exotic, so we're just gonna be talking about like a regular sports car, um, which can also be a coupe, or it can be a sedan too as well. Um, so when it comes to the coupes, you're looking at the Camaros, you're looking at the, the Mustangs. Um, my bad, I know the light just switched up, but you're looking at the Camaros, you're looking at the Mustangs, um, you're looking at, you know, uh, you know, Nissan 350Z, that's a coupe version. Um, when it comes to sedans, uh, coupe also as well, Dodge Challenger. Sedans, you got the Dodge Charger, um, a nice Q, uh, Q50 Infinity, like things of that nature. So with sports cars, this is where things get a little hectic and this is just for me and I'm gonna be completely honest here. Okay, so just, just ask yourself this, right? So when you go run out, if you were to run out a Camaro or a Mustang, and it's, of course it has a V8 in it, you're gonna be tempted, right? It just, when you sit in a sports car, like you just feel like you have to hit the gas. Like it's just something psychological that goes on where it's like, let's see how fast this thing goes, okay? So when you got that type of feeling within yourself, but you have the respect of your own vehicle, just imagine the type of people that's gonna be coming within your door that does not have the same respect. So they're gonna be redlining it all the time. I had people do burnouts, I had people do donuts, um, the whole nine, okay? So just understand that. Uh, but I'm not, I'll, I'll be honest, these cars, you, you list them and they, they're gone. Quick, 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 fast in a hurry. Um, it's just, it's just a sports car, man. A, a drop top in the summer, like it'll, it'll kill her. Like you, you won't be able to keep your hands on, on the car. Uh, but just for me, when it comes to the type of people that it tracks, I usually just stay away from it. Now you obviously have those renters who are take things, take care of it nicely. And you know what I mean? Just want to have it nice, something nice on a weekend. If you got an older couple who just wants to have something for a date night, that's good too as well. But just from my experience, these are problems, okay? <laughs> so I just want to keep, be completely honest with y'all. Uh, pricing difference, let's say for a sedan here, like for me personally, I usually do weekly prices for all my sedans. So you're looking at around 350, 350 to 450 for a sedan a week that you could make. And this is just me, my, my prices. Um, sports car, uh, anywhere from 100 to 200 to 200. And like I said, these are just the Camaros and um, Mustangs and, and, and Challengers and things of that nature. So you're looking around 100 and 200 dollars a day. And that's another thing too as well. So once you start to get higher in luxury, you're not, you're not able to rent out vehicles weekly. You can, but it's gonna be a, at a higher price point. And usually when people see a higher price point, they're not willing to, uh, you know, 
rent it out. You got these people who, who just want it for a weekend, right? So they only want it for two, three days max. So those are like the two different barriers too as well. That's why another reason why I love here where I can just keep a car out for a whole week and I only have to talk to this customer once and do that whole process, clean the car one time a week instead of with this, something like this, I gotta clean it three, four times, five times a week. So that's another big difference to us here as well. Um, the next piece I'm gonna dive into is your luxury vehicles. Okay, your luxuries. Um, luxury vehicles, this, this marker's going out, I may have to get another one. Um, so with this one, it can also be your, it's, it can also be coupes. Um, yeah, let me, let me get another marker for you guys real quick so you can see a little bit better. Uh, make sure. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, we have coupe, um, and then you also have four door sedan. I'm not, I'm not gonna call it a sedan. I mean, I guess so. That's fine. Um, but for these, you're looking at uh, Mercedes. You're looking at Mercedes. You're looking at BMWs, um, Genesis, or Lexus, um, or Lexus. So luxury, um, yeah, we're gonna keep it luxury. That's simplified. Obviously there's more different types of uh, brands. I hope you guys can see this. I just wanna make sure y'all good, um, if that's a little bit better. But yeah, you have your luxury vehicles and you can get these in your coupes or sedan models too as well if it can be a four door or two door luxury vehicle. And like I said, you got those Mercedes, the BMWs, the Genesis, um, the Audis, things of that nature. Now, when it comes to these cars, these cars get get gone quickly as well. Um, and it attracts a different type of customer which that I've seen. So you got cars like this where it will attract somebody who just needs something on a daily or needs some, no, not daily, but needs somebody, needs something on a longer period of time. Their car just went out, so it's like a normal civilian. Um, when it comes to these, these two types of vehicles here, people usually get these vehicles to show out, mainly this one, but what I've seen with this, this, uh, this customer here is takes way more care of your car. Um, because you have the middle middle of it where it's kind of like these but split down in the middle because you some, need somebody who just wants to go out on a weekend and have a nice type of vehicle you have people who um, may want to just experience a different type of feel have a smooth ride and things of that nature of course they're going to be here to show out but a lot of these people keep these vehicles for a longer period, period of time too as well and what you can do with luxury vehicles if you do not want to have to deal with them on a daily basis you can do a month to month lease with them right so you can let somebody have a whole car for a whole year and pay you on a monthly basis um, man it, it goes well if that's something that you're interested in doing but uh, luxury vehicles I like luxury vehicles the only thing they're gonna cost you some money for the little maintenance fees um, get some new brakes on brakes, if, if I need some brakes and rotors on my little, you know, Honda Civic, my Toyota Corollas, I pay me a good $400, $500. Okay, when you talk about these, that's when it start hitting you upside the head. So you're looking at $1,500, $2,000 to do the, the brakes, the rotors, and the pads. So it gets a little bit more pricey, but then also as well, you get a different type of customer too as well. So, right? so if you're feeling more of a luxury, um, if you want to go more for a high-end customer, uh, somebody who may works in corporate or somebody may be a travel nurse things of that nature If you want to deal with those type of people, this will be the one for you um, I like luxury vehicles too as well. So we got sedans. We got sports cars. We have luxuries um, I'm going to move into your SUVs You have SUVs um, and let's say vans So um, currently, I only have one SUV within my fleet and usually people who want SUVs uh, have a family or they are going to travel. Um, other than that, me personally, I don't see anything else. You do have people who do Lyft, Excel, Uber um, in, in these vehicles too as well. But on the outside of this, right? So you have people who have, the, if you get some vans, people use these for their jobs. So this is a great, uh, another great long-term renter. If you don't wanna have to do something like every single day, um, getting you a van within your fleet is definitely going to help you out too as well just to so you can remove yourself a little bit from that business You don't have to be hands-on all the time and like I said these keep the days keep these vehicles for a longer period of time And when I say a van, it's like a normal um, it, it can be a sprinter or it can be something, you know, an eight passenger van Obviously not with the seats in the back So if people need to put some tools and things back there. You can line up and do that too as well um, SUVs like I said people either have need these for their families or they're using these for vacations um, another big piece of this, you can create you a whole concierge um, business. Or you can create you a, a, a VIP drive, get you a driver, um, and have something where they go pick up people. Um, 
you could, you could do some things like this when it comes to proms, little things of that nature. You can get you a driver who drives, you know, Uber XL, like I said, Uber or Lyft XL is one of those, and uh, they'll pay you weekly for that vehicle. Um, any, like, whatever that you want to do, um, obviously to get an SUV costs a little bit more to get started. Um, to get you a nice SUV is going to cost you around anywhere from, anywhere from probably 50, 50 to 100,000, obviously if you're going up to the new Cadillac DeVe and all that. but. Um, you can get you a decent SUV for around sixty to seventy thousand dollars, something nicer, um, and then you'll be able to code that too as well. So obviously, I mean, there's nothing under here, but um, I'll put Cadillac. Um, I'll put Chevy. Um, put Ford. The Cadillac is a beautiful vehicle, right? When you're talking about like an upper echelon vehicle that people want to drive around with, get the tenants blacked out, the whole nine. That works to you as well. You can target limousine drivers who need a vehicle that want to rent out, like everything. Uh, now these vehicles, they will probably you're, you can when it talks about like a weekly basis because this person, my bad, y'all. So, my bad. I just had a uh, <laughs> my phone just went off, but um, I just lost my train of thought. Man, I just lost my train of thought. Anyway, um, SUVs is a great choice. Uh, like I, oh, I was talking about pricing. You're looking at anywhere from probably around seven hundred dollars a week, um, which is which is great. Um, that's something that you can charge for an SUV, a nicer SUV, and somebody be able to rent that out. Um, and you know, like I said, do the Uber with, or like I said, you could be on the outside, get you a driver in there, and set up some ways where you can you know pick some people up, have like a you know a VIP type of experience. If that's something that you may be interested in doing too as well. Um, so we have sedans, sports cars, luxury SUVs. Um, the last piece I'm going to say exotics. So when I say exotics, we are talking about your Lambos. We're talking about your Ferraris. Um, you know, Por Porsches can go under luxury. Um, I'm, I'm talking about like super high end, you know? So you, like I said, you got your Lambo. You got your Ferraris. Um, if you want to go like G Wagon, um, things of that nature. When I, usually exotics, if you're talking about a car that's over $100,000, basically. So, uh, me personally, I do not personally own any exotics at the moment, um, but I do do some brokering deals with people too, as well. So, I'm able to see from the outside the differences here. So, from let's just I'm gonna break down some numbers. So let's just say for a Lambo, you can usually rent that car out for let's say a thousand dollars a day, and uh, let's say if you get rented out half of the month, it's gonna be about fifteen thousand dollars that you make from that car. But from a Lambo, the car note is around five thousand dollars, so you can just go ahead and just remove that file from there. And you're talking about ten k every single month, but that is not included in the maintenance. So, um, like I said, from here to here, it's a huge difference. Just think about here, okay? So it's just. Um, the high, high risk, high reward type of thing. Obviously, this vehicle is going to be, uh, it's going to cost more to maintain. Um, but the type of people that you're getting from these Lambos are going to be a lot more, um, what's the word, for upper echelon, if that's, if that's the correct word to use in it, um, in, 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 that, in that manner. But usually, you're going to get a lot of more high quality people, high quality clientele. Uh, but at the same time, you're still going to have those knuckleheads that come through. Now, just don't, don't act like, let's just, I'm going to be honest with y'all. We're, listen, we're, you never going to be able to avoid no knuckleheads. I don't care what type of business that you own. Um, that, it just comes with territory. Okay, so, but out of all these things, obviously, if you want to deal with a different type of clientele, you're going to go exotics. But, um, yeah, and just for me, exotics, listen, now, you're, you're going to have sometimes where these people keep these cars for a longer period of time. But Max... Uh, you're looking at probably two, three days, somebody may keep a car. Like I said, there are all those other outliers who want to keep the car for a long period of time that has the budget to do so. But usually you're looking at one, one to two, one to three um, days. Uh, and you're going to have to keep this car maintenance. You got to be on top of it because if you're not on top of it, small little things can turn into big things. And now you just lost off of this whole car. So consistent maintenance on this car, consistent uh, daily check-ins and checkouts. Consistent detailing, like let's say for a sedan, you could take this through the drive through car wash. This car, you want to get it detailed every single time. You don't want no bristles to touch this paint, right? Just because how expensive the car is. But 
Um, these are a majority of the different type of business models and the types of vehicles that you can get in um, when it comes to starting a business. Like I said, this is my favorite one. People keep these cars long term. They're easy to acquire. They're easy to fix. Um, I don't have to maintenance on these cars are only third. Like I just do them like once every 30 days and that's just regular oil changes. If I need to get a tune up, I'll do a tune up brakes. I do brakes, tires. I do that. And it's just that car is going and it's just consistently flowing, but obviously as well. Right. So let's just say, like I said, you can make $10,000 profit from Lamborghini every single month for me to make $10,000, uh, man, $10,000 profit, um, from some sed sedans. So you're looking at probably have around eight of them. Right. So it's like a one to eight ratio. So, uh, like I said, a sports car, you're going to deal with a lot of people who want to just go crazy with your cars, but at the same time, these cars are going to be running out consistently. Um, with these type of cars too, you have an ability with usually these two, when it comes to sports cars and exotics, you can have multiple channels on where you can um, get income from that car too as well. So when it comes to a sports car, people like to have nice cars in their video shoots and, you know, uh, photo shoots too as well, baby showers, things of that where, um, Th things of that nature, exotics, people love to have these um, when it comes to prom. So you have like different other ways that you can, you know, get money from these vehicles depending on the type of business model that you decide to go in. But honestly, this video was really just to kind of just give my perspective on the different type of business model that you can hop in. And I just want you to be able to see, okay, all right, I want to probably go luxury. I want to be with more of a, you know, a higher uh, type of clientele, things of that nature. I don't mind dealing with something that's on a day-to-day -day basis. Or you in a place where it's like, you know what, man, I'm gonna go with the sedans. I'm gonna buy me something for 5,000, get that car gone. I don't even wanna look at it for six months and be able to scale to get to those 10 or six cars. Um, so you'll be making it 10K plus every single month. So honestly, it depends on whatever that you wanna do. I'm just here to help you, guide you, and to serve you and kind of just give you my mindset on about it. But um, yeah, these are usually normal the ways that you can get into it. And uh, last piece I wanna throw in there. Just don't think it's a car rental business where you have to like let a stranger drive your car. Like I said, with the SUVs, um, with, with the SUVs, you can create your whole separate business uh, when it comes to, you know, it can be like, like I said, a VIP um, experience where you got lights in the cars, you picking up certain celebrities, or you picking up high end clientele and you get your driver that you're driving there. You build you out some contracts with different companies. Like you could do that too as well. You can get you a Sprinter van, have it do straight party buses. Um, you know, at graduation parties, things of that nature. I, I want you to open your mind up instead of just thinking like, all right, I'm just giving somebody my car and they go rent it. If that's what you want to do, fine, but then don't, don't forget about these other different avenues. Like I said, the photo shoots, the video shoots, um, the proms, the weddings, um, baby showers, um, a taxi service, like whatever you want to do, whatever you want to do, you have that ability. And uh, I hope this allowed you to see that you can, you know, pick different ways that you can get started to as well. But uh, yeah, thank y'all so much for watching this video. If you watch all the way to the end, I appreciate you. Uh, I love you to death, man. God bless you. And uh, if you are interested in getting some coaching or anything of that nature, um, you can either click the link down below or you can book a personal one-on-one -on -one call with me. Or you can just DM me on Instagram the word cars and uh, we'll be able to chop it on there, man, and just, you know, kind of go from there. But uh, I definitely appreciate y'all watching the video. I hope it helped. If it did, let me know in the comments down below and uh, I'll see y'all for the next one. Go.